Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome uh, Council to the Tuesday, January 10th regular meeting. Uh, a couple of things before we get called to order. We do have a couple of uh, members joining us remotely for various reasons. Uh, we'll just do a quick sound check and visual just so that we know that you know that we can hear you and vice versa. So, uh, Councillor Mullock? Yep. Thank you. Councillor Blanchett? Yep. Councillor Blanchett? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. Perfect. And one more uh, housekeeping item. I would really uh, like to thank uh, for their service uh, to this organization and uh, to the residents and businesses of the Village of Bellmount. Uh, Suzanne Bludoff, uh, Deputy Director of Finance, and Silvio Gislamberti, Economic Development Officer, for their 20 years of service. And with that, I will call this meeting to order, 701. First up on the agenda, adoption of the agenda of the 20, uh, January 10th regular meeting in council. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, second by Councillor Pearson. Are there any additions or deletions? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. 3.1, we need to adopt the minutes of the previous Regular meeting of council being December 13th, 2022, so four weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Mullock. Are there any errors or omissions arising? All in favor? It's carried. A couple pieces for correspondence for action. We do have a request for a council appointment to Tourism Valmount. Uh, the request is before you. Uh, what is council's wish? Councillor Pearson. Uh, I would move uh, Councillor Mulek for this position. Councillor Mulek, do you accept that uh, that move? I do. Uh, second by Councillor Mulek. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you, Councillor. And then one more appointment uh, with some background under 6.2 to the Northern Medical Programs Trust. Uh, they're requesting uh, council appointment. Uh, my four years are up. Uh, there's a, there is a cap on that. They are uh, looking to um, review some of those bylaws at the AGM, uh, which will run concurrently with uh, NCLGA and Dawson Creek. So a little bit of background. The Northern Medical Programs Trust was established to connect students to communities, growing the success of the Northern Medical Program and other healthcare education programs in building stronger healthcare in northern communities. As a result, in 2004, uh, the Northern Medical Program for students were admitted, and today there are up to 128 medical students in northern BC at any given time. With that uh, came the uh, Northern Medical Program Trust, which was uh, joined forces with uh, the development of the Northern Medical Program and communities. Uh, it was also established with donations from individuals, corporations, municipalities, service organizations, and about two dozen of us in regional districts have joined the NMPT and have made financial uh, commitments. All donations back in 2004 uh, were in support of community pledges, and it was based on population. Our membership cost us then $52 times each house household. So not cheap, but not uh, over taxing. To date, uh, they've raised almost $9.5 million uh, and they do annual disbursements of approximately $250,000. So for example, a uh, third year students will start doing their practicums. Uh, they, will, uh, they are required to travel to Valmount, Vanderhoof, Dawson Creek, Terrace, areas like that. And this fund helps them alleviate some of those costs. So they are, you know, um, you know, a trip of that nature would cost $7,500. Well, it's reimbursed to the student through this program or, or copped by the uh, program uh, prior to expenses. So really helping those students uh, get a feel for Northern communities. And the board of directors sets strategic direction along with uh, four officers from Northern uh, University of Northern British Columbia. 
Um, my, again, my four years are coming to an end. Uh, they have, I am a director at large uh, f until May, that would be NCLGA, uh, but with the turnover in local governments in the last election, there was a lot of vacancies left on that board. And uh, while a municipality can have two representatives, they can only have one vote. So I'll leave it to council there. Uh, should you wish to have me continue to the uh, NCLGA date or because of our turnover in government, is there another representative that would like to sit on that board? They meet quarterly and uh, I, it's an outstanding board to be a part of. So leave it to council. Councillor Blanchett. Yeah, I would like to move that you uh, continue sitting there until NCLGA, and then if you so wish, if you would continue your service on that uh, program uh, Thank you. committee. Seconder. Councillor McLean, that Mayor Torgerson continue uh, as the appointment, as the appointed representative to the Northern Medical Programs Trust. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Anything in the reading file folks would like to surface? You've all seen the Columbia Basin Trust orientation offer. Please take advantage of that as your schedules allow. And of course, a nice congratulatory letter from our partners at BC Hydro. Is there anything else? Board highlights, of course, RDFFG. Hearing none, moving on to administrative reports. 8.1, local government requirements under the Accessible British Columbia Act. Recommendation that the report be received. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Blanchett. Discussion for my information purposes. Uh, Councillor Blanchett. Um, if I'm not mistaken, didn't the uh, Tourism Board pay for a survey that came in last year um, and they went around and they, they went into all of the um, uh, village owned properties and did an assessment? And did we not get a report on that? I know they came to the library and we were, I think we were waiting for a report. If not, we have it. I'll let Councillor Pearson speak to it first and then we'll throw it over to administration. Yeah, actually, I believe that was easily two years ago, I believe, uh, where they came through and did the uh, accessibility survey for the entire community. And okay. so, yeah, I'm not, to my knowledge, I'm not sure where any report back came out of that information. Be on okay. Yeah. Because the report will help staff in making decisions. Mr. Debenow. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, to the councillor's question. I understand that uh, the assessment we might be referring to was completed by the Rick Hansen Foundation, um, a screening of all of our, our buildings there and some suggestions on how we might improve accessibility. Uh, certainly a helpful tool. I understand we do have final reporting on that, and I'll look to circulate to council for awareness. Um, this report here in front of you is a bit of an evolution to that. So the province uh, passed the Accessible British Columbia Act uh, in September of last year, uh, 2021, pardon, and in 2022 passed additional regulations. And so yet to be defined some of the additional roles that municipalities will be picking up, but we understand that municipalities are responsive to the new legislation. So between ourselves and member municipalities of the regional district, Fraser, Fort George, we're looking to see how we might uh, collectively help address each community's new uh, reporting requirement and, and make those much needed uh, enhancements. So um, a progression from, from that uh, previous report. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's been received. 8.2, Pacific Institute for Climate Solutions, the PICS internship with UNBC. There's a couple of resolutions for uh, council to consider this evening. First one, that council approve staff to submit an application to the Pacific Institute for Climate Solutions inter internship, January uh, 2023 intake. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor McLean. Uh, discussion on the internship from the PICS. It's a great program. Certainly is, Councillor. Yeah. All in favor? 
It's carried. And two, that staff work with the uh, principal investigator to craft contract language for an intern. Should the application be successful, that satisfies both parties. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Mullock. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Have fun with the good doctor. I, I confirm the application will go in tomorrow as it is due on Thursday. <laughs> 8.3, amendment to the 2023 uh, council meeting schedule. There's a couple here. Uh, first one, regular council meeting scheduled for, oh, that a regular council meeting be scheduled for September the 12th, 2023. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Blanchette. Discussion, kind of a um, rescheduling of, uh, UMBC, so yeah. all in favor? It's carried. And that uh, the regular council meeting of September 26th, 2023, be canceled to better accommodate the attendance to the U UBCM. Moved by Councillor Pearson, second by Councillor McLean. Is there any discussion? Getting back on a Friday to get set up for a meeting on Tuesday. I think that's fair. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. 8.4, Vail Mountain District Fire Hall Property Use Agreement. We're looking to that the village of Vail Mount enter into an agreement with the Regional District Phase of Fort George regarding the use of the Vail Mountain District Volunteer Fire Hall property located at 1380 Fifth Avenue in Vailmont, legally described as Lot 1, Block 6, District Lot 7356, District Lot Plan 10449, PID 01269415 for a term of five years. Moved by Councillor Blanchette, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Pearson. And there, is there any discussion on that? Should I reread the resolution? All in favor? It's carried. 8.5 is looking to uh, appoint a few adjudication committee members for a two-year term under the Columbia Basin Trust Ready Grants Adjudication Committee and with a recommendation that Sherry G. and Eugene Jamin uh, be appointed for a two-year term. Amen. Moved by Councillor McLean, seconded by Councillor Blanchette. Discussion? Councillor Pearson? Yeah, there'll be a, a couple of valuable uh, faces on that that committee, so that'll be great. Awesome, yeah, indeed. Is there an additional from administration? Uh, Council, just for your awareness, uh, another call for applications for this committee will close on the 16th. At this time, there are still two vacant positions, so for those at home listening or for those uh, in the audience who might have someone in mind who would like to consider being part of this uh, body to help adjudicate those grants, uh, there are still a few days left to get a, a nomination in. Thank you very much. No further discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.6, bylaw enforcement summary report, December 22, and the year end report to be received. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Are there, is there any discussion on the last month or the year end? All in favor? It's carried. 8.7, building inspection report for November and December uh, 2022 building values, building permit values uh, that the report be received. Moved by Councillor Pearson, second by Councillor Mullock. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Section 9, bylaws and policies, 9.1, amendments to staff training policy number 25. We're looking that the Village of Elmont staff training policy 25 as amended be approved. Moved by Councillor McLean, second by Councillor Mullock. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Amendment, uh, sorry, 9.2, amendments to animal control policy bylaw, uh, policy, not bylaw, policy, number 80. Uh, looking to be amended and approved by council. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor Mullock. 
discussion on the amendments now that we do have a bylaw enforcement officer? Good Do clarification now. Put, put put those titles into the mix. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 9.3, Village of Belmont Freedom of Information Bylaw, number 868-2023. Be given first, second, third reading. Moved by Councillor Blanchett, second by Councillor Pearson. Discussion? Nothing exciting like FOIPA. All in favor? It's carried. And 9.4, uh, Village of Belmont Fees and Charges Bylaw, number 869, 2023. It be given first, second, third reading. Moved by Councillor Mullock, second by Councillor Pearson. Discussion? Councillor Pearson. Uh, just a comment, and, uh, and I'm not going to throw it out there as last minute request, but um, just in reading through the uh, the charges bylaws. Um, just curious if some information could come back to us on how those rates are determined. Uh, it's quite a list of things when you look through trying to compare how one business compares to another business for water usage and so on. So um, hadn't really looked at that list before, but it's pretty extensive on how it breaks them down. So uh, is it m more or less? looking for clarity around the the utility fee structure or how just how the, the basically the rate structure okay um if it's based on estimated usage or and it just around water water and sewer they're both sewer. they're tied together okay. so i don't think that's a stretch mr depano we'll, we'll be happy to provide that okay thank you any further discussion all in favor it's carried not seeing any new business uh, this evening. Is there anybody uh, wish to have uh, to forward a notice of motion? Councillor Blanchett. Um, I would, uh, Your Worship. I'd like us to um, consider reviewing our actually our in camera Zoom bylaw to look it over. Uh, section ten of the procedural bylaw, B ten F, I believe. Section 10, certainly subsection uh, to be determined, Your Worship, but uh, familiar with the area councillor is, is speaking to. Right. Uh, moved by Councillor Blanchett, seconded by Councillor McLean. Uh, discussion. I don't have any issues, Councillor, having a. Did you want to speak to this first, uh, Councillor Blanchett? Okay. I have. I, I don't have a lo any issues bringing this notice of motion forward. Uh, I think it has value. I think there's a lot of checks and balances that keep that section of the procedural bylaw in check, mainly our oath of office and the code of conduct that we all signed. So just something for, for council to consider in, in two weeks or four weeks' time whenever uh, staff work with Councillor Blanchett to bring that motion forward. All in favor? It's carried. And uh, just an FYI back to you, Councillor Blanchett, on the um, communication between our emergency services department and uh, the District of Logan Lake. Uh, that is uh, initiated and ongoing. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Council reports, 12.1. Uh, any volunteers to have the first one read of 2023? Councillor Blanchett. I'll go first. My list is really, really long here. So uh, December 19th, uh, we met with the ambulance staff, that which was fabulous. Um, we had a really good conversation about how things work and why. And on January 5th, we had a PHR meeting, uh, Councillor Pearson and I. Uh, next steps, um, basically, we're just going to smother everybody with the knowledge of how valuable it is to have um, a personal health record and to be signed up online for it. And that's everything. And congratulations to Suzanne and Silvio, 20 years of service to the village uh, and to the citizens. Thank you very, very much. It is greatly appreciated. And there's a lot of knowledge in those uh, 40 years combined. Uh, and you'll also be pleased to hear that the BC Ambulance Service and the province of British Columbia have 
have uh, reached a tentative agreement moving forward for uh, mm -hmm. uh, a collective uh, bargaining. Yes. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mullock. We'll take we'll take the Brady Bunch off the on December. Yep, December fourteenth. Uh, I was uh, at a uh, entertainment society meeting, and uh, one of the uh, items of discussion was uh, the addition of uh, an another channel. So uh, pretty happy to hear that. Uh, very very happy with uh, with the uh, the uh, the quality of uh, of uh, community TV and and uh, and the selection. So that was very nice. Also on December fourteenth, I uh, attended a meeting with uh, our CAO and uh, a developer, uh, Darren Weber, and uh, realtor Sherry Battensby, and it was uh, basically discussing uh, interest in Belmont uh, housing and uh, development needs and opportunities. A very very interesting meeting. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Mullock. Uh, Councillor McLean. Um, we had one event, um, and that was yesterday morning. For two hours, I attended a webinar um, on the Columbia River Treaty Local Governments Committee's um, socioeconomic performance measures, and it was an introduction for the newly elected officials. So it was really interesting and a good refresher for those of us who have been there before. How many new faces around the table? You know, I don't know. There was 52 of us there, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, I don't wow. really know who was new. Oh, wow. There was a lot. A small gathering. Yeah, Frank Marino was there. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was it. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, a two-hour meeting with 52 people. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Council Person. All right. Also on December 19th, uh, joined Mayor, Council, CAO, and... Uh, had a nice lunch discussion with uh, local paramedics, uh, Derek McClure and Chris. I apologize for not knowing Chris's last name. Uh, it was a really good discussion on uh, getting to understand how um, things are shaping up for the new alpha uh, designation for our, our station. Uh, January 5th, also the uh, PHR personal health records meeting. And as Councillor Blanchett indicated, we will be bombarding the community with information and uh, I meant to wear my ask me about the my health key pin so uh, if anybody has any questions you can track us down and we'll tell you what it's all about it's a very easy process to get registered to have access to your personal health records and also do online booking of appointments which is so nice and easy to do um, and yesterday afternoon uh, had a community forest meeting and that was my week that was your month. Uh, December 14th, I uh, took part in a regional district phase of Fort George orientation session, followed by on the 15th, uh, open board meeting of the board, of the of their board. On the 16th, on my way back uh, from Prince George, I was able to stop into McBride and join uh, Mayor Runtz in on an uh, introductory call with the new Municipal Affairs Minister, Ann Kang. So thanks to our partners in McBride for allowing the, uh, and the, the technological uh, accommodation. Uh, the 19th, uh, BC Ambulance Service meet and greet. Uh, really uh, good to hear dedicated paramedics uh, coming in uh, very, very shortly along with a new unit chief. On the 21st, I was able to give well wishes to office staff before the departure for the holidays. Uh, on the 22nd, I had a conversation with Canada Post Government Engagement Team regarding the recent break-in and some potential um, security upgrades. Later that day, I was able to stop over at the Public Works Yard uh, to give well wishes to uh, Mr. Pelche's staff uh, before their departure for the holidays. On January the 2nd, I was able to meet with uh, University of Northern BC Professor Dr. Joseph Shea uh, regarding PICS grant funding, not what we were discussing tonight, but a, a grander um, natural disaster um, snowpack analysis, climate change, um, with more details coming. Uh, on December the 6th, met with BC, Hy sorry, January the 6th. Uh, met with BC Hydro regarding a breakwater project, two breakwater projects 
that are being planned at the Velmont Marina. Uh, Village was there in a capacity of debris management to ensure that um, none of those projects uh, interject with, with the overall management of debris on that reservoir. Uh, January 9th, uh, Board of Directors meeting with the Northern Medical Programs Trust. On the, later that day, had a funding discussion with our CBT liaison, Angie Ellsmore, Mr. Defino. Uh Today, I uh, had a really good discussion with uh, Sona Mann, who is the owner of the IGA, uh, regarding, um, and he's not alone, ongoing supply chain issues, uh, whether it's highway conditions, whether it's warehousing, whether it's um, fuel prices, um, Really good to hear his perspective on, on some of those challenges. Uh, later, this uh, earlier this afternoon, was able to present uh, our geothermal project to the Simp First Nation Natural Resources Department Advisory Committee, uh, with some uh, really cool recommendations going back to their uh, chief and council on Monday. So I wasn't expecting that quick of a turnaround. And uh, just uh, and then later this afternoon had a discussion with uh, Amy Ambrosoni uh, with the Columbia Basin Trust delivery of benefits uh, regarding uh, some more due diligence around the geothermal project. Motion to receive. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Mullock. Any questions on the reports to Councils Councillor Pearson? Uh, Follow up on your discussion with Canada Post, uh, if they gave any indication on what their short-term and or long-term solutions. Um, at this point, locking the doors at 515 um, negates the possibility anybody working for a large industrial project in the area of getting their mail at all. That is, part, that was part of the discussion. Um, Longer term is a um, site analysis, uh, also working with the building owner to see what upgrades can be had there as well. Um, but in the short term, that's that's the cards we have. Okay. If folks are gonna wreck things, uh, then perhaps we can't check our mail without having staff on site. Yeah. And it, it's not a, Great scenario, but it keeps post boxes and other things intact at that organization for the short term. And hopefully they move on some of those security measure upgrades. Any further questions? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, we do have time for public comment this morning, or uh, this morning, this, this evening under uh, section 14. Are there any? Public comments on items considered by council as part of the approved agenda. Second call. Third call, come on. Thank you. I'll now give notice uh, to proceed in camera for consideration of three items per section 91A and K of the community charter to discuss matters related to A, personal information about a identifiable individual who holds or is being considered for a position as an officer, employee, or agent of the municipality, or another position appointed by the municipality, and K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary stages, and that in the view of the council could, re could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they are held in public, and that's for the two other items. Moved by Councillor Mullock, seconded by Councillor Blanchett, just should be no discussion, we're going in camera. Uh, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much all.